What's going on YouTube? I'm glad you guys clicked on this one. This is gonna be a very informative, instructional video for you guys. I never turned on the camera and actually told you all the things that I wish I knew before I started my fitness journey. Way, way back a decade ago, I've been lifting for at least 15 years, so over a decade. I didn't know as much as I know now, obviously, right? We learn more, we start implementing new things, we start listening, and we become better. So with that being said, for 2021, I wanna make sure I put you guys on the right path to success for your fitness journeys, when you're in the gym, when you're in the kitchen, when you're dieting, in, when you're trying to get swole, there's some important things that you need to keep in your mind, important things that you need to do in and out of the gym that's going to help you get to that next level. We're always trying to strive for better. That's always the goal. But before we get right into it, I want you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the red button down there. Go ahead and like this video while you're at it. And you might as well hit that bell so you can turn your notifications on so you will not miss any of the videos I'm uploading to the channel. All right, let's get right into it. Number one, bench press is not that important. Starting out with my fitness journey, when I started lifting, all I was worried about was bench press. I didn't like squats. I like curls here and there for my biceps, but I was mainly all about the bench press because that number one question that everyone always asks is, to this day, how much do you bench? Does not matter. I hate that question. I used to like the question when I was all about it, but now it's pointless. I've learned that it's not about how much weight you lift. It's all about how much you look like you can lift. What? After a crazy excruciating workout, you might walk around the gym looking like you can bench 400 pounds, when in all actuality, you probably can only bench 225 for 10 reps. It does not matter. It does not put a toll on any of the game. It's all about training your chest the most effective way. And bench press is not the only exercise that is important when training your chest. So if you're new to lifting, do not worry so much about trying to get that large bench. You're not a power lifter. So with that being said, it does not matter how much you actually can bench. But if you just wanna build a nice physique, you need to focus on time and attention, lots of progressive overload, lots of hypertrophy, better techniques on other exercises other than the bench press. Number two, now this is gonna blow a lot of your minds. Nutrition is everything. You can't expect to get the results you want. I don't care if you're trying to lose weight, tone up, if you're trying to build muscle. If your nutrition is not on point, you will not get the benefits. You can't go in the gym, lifting weights and stick into a routine and come home eating garbage. Just like you can't just eat quality foods and stick to a diet and then have terrible training sessions but believe me when I tell you this I have learned over the years and I wish they told me this before that changing small things like removing sugar from my diet removing dairy from my diet removing fast food from my diet is going to take my gains to a whole nother level the results come quicker the results stay longer 70% nutrition 30% exercise I know you guys seen it before I know you heard it a thousand times and we just hate it but it's true you have to stick to a good diet a nice regimen it doesn't even necessarily have to be called a diet. You do have to consume quality foods in order to give your muscles the nutrition it needs. Number three, there are gonna be good days and there are gonna be bad days. But even on your worst day, you have to get up and you have to get it done. That's something that we all forget. We have these bad days every now and then and we just really don't feel like training, really don't feel like eating and sticking to a regimen and we just blow our diets or we just say, forget this leg day, forget this chest day, which a lot of people never say. And next thing you know, you just toss well-deserved results in the trash. You gotta understand that no matter what, no matter how you feel, it's all mental and you have to put the work in. Do it! Just do it! You have to wake up every single day with a purpose and make sure that you are working towards that goal. Whether it's eating, whether it's training, do not give up on anything. Good days, bad days. Even on your worst day, you must train as if it's your best day. That was pretty good. Number four. Now this is for when you're losing weight or you're shredding down, you're trying to cut the fat. The scale means nothing. All right, I'm not gonna say it means nothing. It does mean something. Numbers do want to be decreased. But at the same time, just because the number is not dropping down on the scale does not mean you aren't progressing does not mean you aren't receiving those results. What I like to do is focus on 
the mirror. How I look in the mirror. Take physique photos. See yourself on day one. See yourself on day seven. That's how you really can analyze what you're doing and if it's working. That scale could stay at, let's just say, 200 pounds for two weeks, but your body fat is dropping. There's things like muscle holds weight. There's things like water weight. There's things like bad days and good days. Every single day is not gonna be the same, and there's a lot of variables that come into play with that number on the scale. So what I would say for you, for anyone out there trying to lose weight or burn fat, that the scale is not always going to be your best friend. Use the scale for what it's worth, track your numbers, but don't get depressed if you see your numbers are decreasing at the rate that you like them to. Make sure you focus on the mirror and how you look because that's way more important. Number five, yes, I'm talking to you. Stop skipping leg day. It's time to stop. Leg days are important. I wish they would have told me that back then. I didn't train legs for years, and it probably shows in my physique. But leg day is super important, and not just for the development of the lower body, but you do need a strong foundation in order to build up top. But at the same time, those leg days are where you burn the most calories. So if you are into losing weight, you might wanna focus on training on them leg days, training your hardest, really breaking down those calories, so then that next day you will see that nice change in the weight. It's a no-brainer that a lot of our power is used from our legs. We walk a lot, we stand a lot. We don't necessarily walk around curling weight, benching weight, but we do walk around all day. We do stand here and there. With that being said, we are burning calories nonstop all throughout the day. Hence the why we have these Fitbits running around here where you're tracking steps. It's important. Walking is important. Leg days are important. Your lower body is essential. Make sure you never skip a leg day ever again. And if we're talking about physique, you have to match your top hat with your lower half so make sure that you are training your lower half to make it as nice and developed as your chest because you know we all never skip national chest day number six I think it's six is it six never compare yourself to another person never compare your results to someone else's results that's something no one ever tells you you kind of learn that along the way but if you're new out there and you have not understood it yet and you have not taken it in cut the phone off get off of YouTube Stop comparing your results to the next person. Everyone's body is different. Everyone will respond to certain things differently. You have to make sure that you are doing everything possible for you to get the results that you need and move in your own path. You can use someone else's physique as a goal, but never compare their path to your path. Although we all have the same 24 hours, they might have more free time on their hands. They might have less distractions on their hands. And then if we really break it down, their genetics might be better than yours. Keep that in mind. Stop the comparison. Make sure you focus on your own goal. You versus you. I know y'all have heard that before. That's very important in this fitness journey, fitness game. Compare yourself to yourself. Compare yourself to yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I doing enough? If you're not, do more. That's the best way to go about it. Number seven, supplements are not needed. Understand something. Marketing is very, very important. It's driving this world. There's a lot of people out there who are going to try to sell you a product simply because they want to make money off of it. That's not always the case, but you will see it a lot. So don't believe that person got a six pack because they took this pill. Don't believe that person got a bigger chest, bigger bicep because they drunk that type of protein shake. Marketing is key. So what you need to do is turn that off in your head and understand that supplements are not all that is cracked up to be. Supplements are an aid. Supplements will help you reach a certain goal, maybe at a quicker rate or just at a different pace. Definitely the same thing but they're not needed now there's a lot of people out there in my comment section on Instagram on Facebook and they believe that they will never reach their ultimate goal simply because they don't have enough money to fund those supplements that's not true all you really need is a protein powder maybe some CLA for some more fat burn and stick to your normal vitamins your multivitamin your fish oils you don't have to take pre-workout you don't have to drink casein you don't have to drink BCAAs if you have the funds for it go right ahead but again I'm talking to my beginner people out there who haven't been laid out the blueprint so with that being said I'm saying that now you do not need supplements to reach your ultimate goal all you need is willpower, some effort, some focus, some dedication, determination, inspiration, motivation I can go all night but supplements is not gonna be one of them Am I on eight yet? Eight, let's get it, eight. Stop consuming so much protein. So coming up, I used to believe that protein was the end all be all. 
I needed a ton of protein, 300, 400 grams of protein getting it in. Why? Because I was listening to the big time bodybuilders that were inside of the fitness magazines telling us their diets, breaking down what they do. Listen, you can't do what they do. You can't consume that much protein. That much protein is not going to be good for you. All you really need is a gram per body weight. Now that also may not be enough, but you can take it up a step higher depending on your fitness level. But starting out, just try to shoot for a gram per body weight or a gram per lean body weight. Protein is essential, especially for the muscle building, but you have to understand that over consuming too much protein will kill you. It will tear you down and then it will have you farting all over the place, stinking up the gym, stinking up your house, stinking up your car, just stinking. Protein farts are the worst. Stop consuming so much protein. Save your money, eat a good amount of protein, and you'll be good to go. Number nine, training for countless hours of the day is overkill. Overtraining is a thing, and I won't say that there's times where it's not necessary, but at the end of the day, you do not need to work out in the gym for two to three hours expecting to earn results. All you need is about 45 to 60 minutes, and again, this is based off of your fitness level, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. But at the end of the day, even the most advanced individual does not need to spend hours at a time inside the gym in order to build muscle, in order to shred down. It's just not needed. What's going to happen is you're not going to get any rest. We have to rest in order to build muscle, in order to earn results. That's why you do your best work while you're sleeping. So you want to shoot to sleep for six to eight hours just so you can get that rest. But if you are in the gym, overkilling your muscles and then going the next day and doing the same exact thing, you will never receive the rest you need in order to get results. So that's why I say it's overkill. So stop spending countless hours in the gym, stick to around 60 to 90 minutes. I know I said 45 to 60, but that may not be enough. So let's go ahead and go 60 minutes to 90 minutes. And that should be all we need. Number 10, 10, nothing worth having comes easy. These fitness journeys are called a journey for a reason. It's a lifestyle. If it was easy, everyone will be doing it. The fact of the matter is, it's not easy at all. It's going to take a lot out of you at certain times, but the benefits are so rewarding. When you're first starting out your journey, you think it's all glitter and gold, peaches and cream, because you don't see anybody's hardships. You don't see the hard times these people are going through inside of their homes when they're dieting, or even behind the scenes at the gym when they're training their hardest. All you see is a picture of them and their physiques, and you think it was all gravy. No, that's wrong. Wrong. Mentally, it is draining. And the truth of the matter is, it never gets easier. You just get better. You need to keep that in the back of your mind every time you go in the gym and you grind. Keep that in the back of your mind every time you go in the gym and you grind. Every single day that you get out of bed and you put your feet on the ground, you need to focus on being better on that day. Maybe doing just a little bit more than you did the last day. I'm starting to sound like a motivational speaker right now, but the proof is in the pudding. Anything worth having does not come easy. So you have to make sure that you never forget that. You train your hardest, give it your all, and you'll be good to go. All right, y'all, that's all I got for you today. 10 things that I wish I knew back then that I know now that have helped me take all of my results to a whole nother level. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, I need you to do me a favor. Comment below. Tell me one of the things that you wish you knew back then, or just tell me which one of these 10 nuggets is going to help you take your results to that next level. I'm here for y'all. I want to help you guys out as much as I can. So let's keep growing the channel. Make sure y'all subscribe. Check out the last videos. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one.